Hey YouTube, it's uh, Kyle Hagen and Aaron Shepard. Uh, we're here at Collector Mania Talk about to review the newest data pack for Netrunner called Station One. So I keep looking up to just make sure it's in frame. Sorry, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna be weird this whole time because it's the first time we've ever done this. So yeah, yeah. we're uh, we're did starting did not at the beginning. Uh, yeah, exactly. Not even the beginning. At the very the, end, the actually. Cycle, right. This like, is like the memento of, of deck pack oh. reviews. Yeah, we should just go randomly back through them. Maybe. Okay. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about um, the uh, runner cards from. Uh, station one. Um, we're gonna have a follow-up video that's gonna be the corporation cards. So uh, let's just dive right in. Uh, we're gonna go in pack order. So if you guys are have your packs ready and want to follow through, just yeah, go just for crack it. Crack it open. And you'll see what we say. So the first one that we have here is I'm, I'm gonna butcher these names because uh, yeah, that's how we do it. Is a uh, Severin stim implants. So it says as a click, make a run on R and D and HQ, and you ch uh, and trash two or more cards from your grip. Whenever you access a card from that server, access one additional card for every two cards trashed. So just good, good anarch behavior. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's cybernetics uh, too, which is something cool because they have oh, a bunch yeah. of cybernetic stuff happen. So you can actually uh, try to run like you know the the shop, the gene implant shop, not the gene implant shop, but the the chop shop cybernetics thing that like makes it so you take less damage when you do mm. stuff or whatever. But yeah, yeah. there's a lot of cards that can uh, help with cybernetics, and cybernetics is just an archetype that's not really a thing yet. So <laughs> it should be interesting though, because um, I'd like to see if I could run this in Apex. Right. So trash two more your card. Oh, from your oh, grip. I guess it's your yeah. grip, so it doesn't really matter though. Uh, but from your grip, that could be okay. I mean, yeah, again, an anarch yeah. or something um, like that where you can recur. Or... Uh, also a fisk deck or anything that's using fast. Oh yeah, yeah. Then you just get your kind of like you know, mini mini medium right there. So. Yep. All right, let's move on to this next card. <clears throat> uh, Clan Vengeance. So this is another. Again, we're this is the first or second. I think this is the second pack of a. Red Sand Cycle, so we're in Mars and we're talking about clans, so yeah. this one has the clan archetype, this resource. It says, whenever you suffer any amount of damage, place one power counter on Clan Vengeance. And you can trash it to try and trash one card from HQ at random for each power counter on Clan Vengeance. So, uh, It's a nice hard counter to the, the Wayland, um, just pecking at you with the, uh, I forget which... Uh, oh yeah, it just, is. there's a bunch of them now, because you have now... Uh, well, and Jinteki yeah. in general. Too. Yeah, Jinteki in general. Too. Anyone that's like, oh, <laughs> have a net damage, oh, have a net damage. It's kind of an expensive resource for uh, like a meta that has things like um, All Seeing Eye and stuff where you can really easily destroy resources. But uh, it, it's uh, it's nice because it's a trash ability. It doesn't require a click, so you can try to do it before they're about to play. So like, if they do their first click to do something, you're like, okay, just in case you're about to do All Seeing Eye or something, I'm going to trash this, and you're going to like lose your All Seeing Eye and all the other cards in your hand. So yeah, you know, it's like a, game, a really cool game of chicken. Um, it's also just, uh, again, if you're doing like Fisk or something that's making them draw, mm -hmm. and you've got a bunch of counters on it, make them draw, trash it, or trash it once you are successful in R&D, but before you access. A lot of influence, so if you're going to try to cross faction, it's not going to work as well, but, yeah, um, yeah. that kind of reminds me of, uh, not one of the shards, whatever shard or uh, fragment is where the Hades, fragment. the one that makes them discard. Hades yeah. lets you access, it's the, like, Eden or Utopia. Oh, Eden. It's like you just have this instead, just, and, yeah, just, and just you can have more than one, so you're like, discard all of your hand. <laughs> yeah, because it's so, only two cards on the, uh, yeah. the shard. So. so our last anarch card of this review is going to be Counter Surveillance, which I think is kind of an interesting one. So uh, Counter Surveillance is a one-cost uh, resource. It's got the clan subtype again, so we're going to see lots of clan stuff from uh, Station 1 and the whole Red Sand Cycle, because that's a whole archetype. Uh, click and trash, make a run, a successful instead of pay accessing. Pay X credits to access up to X cards from this server. If able, X is the number of tags you have. Or if able, period, X is the number of tags you have. And we haven't started reading flavor text yet, but uh, I like this one, so I'm gonna read it. <laughs> Which is, who watches the watchers? We do. Yeah. Like, so they're the people who are doing that. But um, yeah, so access up to X cards from this server if able. So, I mean, you are currently running an Omar deck that loves this, that would love yeah, something like this. Yeah, but I don't have, like, 20 credits to spend, usually. Sure, I guess that's fair. So, like, if you could throw some more money in there, but... but yeah, you, no, you, it, it Again, would... leveraging number of tags, so, like, in this meta right now where you have, like, tag-heavy decks, it's something you could really be... It'd be really cool. It's kind of like Vamp mixed with Medium or something like that, or Vamp mixed with Extra Access. Oh, yeah. Well, and it, it's on... Um, any server, so that that's also yeah, long. that's true. Like, you do have to trash it though, so it's only a one per one off. But like seriously, if you needed to hit R and D really hard on this, or if you yeah. needed to hit their whole hand, um, that could be really cool. I do think that um, 
it kind of fits in with that whole archetype of like let's leverage lots of tags, which is kind of nice for some of the tags that are trying to happen. Yeah, well, and as there's easier ways to avoid boom and uh, scorcher yeah. things like that. And then again, so you like you have the tags, you're drawing from the tags, like you're using the cards to get money, and then you're accessing. Yeah. So like it all seems like a maybe Although, it could be a crazy snowball. Obelisk is probably lost. Yeah, no, I agree. That's exactly what I was thinking right there. Yeah. So, so Omar problem. Uh, we got the first club, the first card of the criminals here. It's called Mobius, and I'm a fan because it's a math joke. Uh, I'm sure you are as well. Uh, <clears throat> so Mobius is a zero cost event. It's a run event. It says make a run on R and D. If successful, you may make another run on R and D this run uh, when this run ends. If the second run is successful, you gain four. So, a zero cost event that lets you shove two runs into into one. So that's good with like leveraging medium, right? And then getting some money afterwards, which is really cool. And if you're already you know a deck that's kind of leveraging central servers, you can do or, some pretty yeah. cool janky stuff for one click and zero credits with this. And if you're good at it, you get four credits. So. Right. <laughs> I mean, like that's what you do. So like, what what's going to change between? There's nothing that can happen too. So you're pretty much always going to get four if you can make the first run work, unless you have to break a ton, right? Yeah. So that's the only thing. So curious question. Um, doppelganger on top of this. You would get the run, then the, the event would make another run if you succeed it, and, and then the doppelganger, the doppelganger sort of third run. But I was like, man, you could probably do something crazy there where you could, you know, use any of those, like, if you read three runs in the server, if you did a three central server runs, get X. Well, yeah, right? but you're yeah, not going right. to hit all of them. Exactly. So you could, like, yeah, exactly. So but I was like, dang, they can't you do could, that. You could load up a medium. Yeah, you could. I mean, that's just got to be, like, the best mediums type card yeah, in the game. Or top hat. Uh, other yep. things uh, interact with R and D, so yeah, uh, that's that's kind of cool. Like, actually, I think that's really good with medium. I mean, imagine that. Like, yeah, just because for one click you get double the medium hits. That's perfect, and it's one influence and zero money. Like, yep. I don't know. It seems really good. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna hammer R and D. Probably want some Mobius in there. Yeah, low influence. It'll low influence. Yeah, and in criminals having stuff that lets you do stuff with R&D is always good. System seizure. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, and this is what kind of spurred the idea of maybe we should wait and not do something scripted, because we were talking about system seizure. And so system seizure is a zero cost current. It's an event, uh, if you don't know what a current is. Uh, this card cannot be trashed unless and until another current is played or an agenda is scored. So it's a runner current, obviously, since we're talking about runners. <laughs> the first icebreaker whose strength you increase each turn does not return to its base strength until the end of the turn. So. You're thinking things like out of the core set, like Gordian Blade, and I can't remember the other two, but um, some of your icebreaker. Well, I mean, it's any icebreaker. It is, but nice. th this effect is on is attached to those oh, pieces uh, of the icebreakers. Those icebreakers. Snowball, I think. Anything that says uh, that the strength is increased until the end of the wrong. So this is like, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like the shaper, the shaper or mo in the core set was like you. If you're playing shaper and core set. You're allowed to run, and you don't have to worry about strength going down because every icebreaker for shaper and corset says that on the bottom of it. Right? Okay, yeah. and so that's why I was like, oh man, that's kind of very shapery. But this is nice because if you did something with like stealth credits, and you're like sitting there with like, oh, I used one of my stealth credits, you can really save the rest of them during the turn. Right, she's well, to break. And then you said that last night, and I was like, oh, Bobby Yaga. Oh yeah, again, then we we're talking about like, it's okay, this just... this is sitting out, and you have Bobby Yaga out, so you just have your like. Monster breaker, and then you pay like two credits, and it's just they got yeah. the strength up for the rest of the run, and then you just plow through things cheaply. Yeah, so yeah, so it um, is a current, so it's a little fragile, and you get a little bit less control over like when what like happens because I know a lot of uh, the corp decks now are running currents, so yeah, you gotta well, be careful. But that's another reason to possibly run this is because it's a zero cost current. Mm -hmm. You can just be like, oh yeah, oh, I don't idea. like yours. Let's yeah, just that's a good idea. It. So like so, you can have it and just be like, yeah, I'm not gonna use this anytime soon. But now you can't like yeah. you know targeted marketing, targeted uh, marketing me or well, any of the other stuff that is true. Static, I think. Yeah. Yep, cerebral static, and you have um, like enhanced login protocols, which is another current that's annoying. Uh, worker, no, worker strike is good for the runner. Yeah, um, but yeah, so zero cost currents, they're pretty good. So uh, think it, about that. Yeah, one. if you can fit it in, fit it in. Oh, whoops, we forgot. I guess I'm supposed to move this or something. Mm. Anyway, um, we're yeah. going to talk about. Actually, maybe we should save that for the end. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So save, save them. We're going to talk about uh, customized se uh, secretary. You got a flash of the new runner, so we flashed you. So we do here. Kyle, stop flashing people. You can't make me. They're going to put you away. All right, so we got Customized Secretary. This is a program. Uh, it's a shaper program. Two cost, one mem. It says, when you install Customized Secretary, reveal the top five cards of your stack. You may host any number of reveal programs from your uh, stack on it. And then you shuffle your stack. And you install the hosted program, paying all of its install costs. So 
uh, that's a click thing you can do. You click and install a hoster program, paying all its costs. So you want to talk? You want to start? What you want to talk about this one? Yeah. So this one doesn't necessarily make sense because every other card that hosts programs, when it hosts them, um, they either some of them don't count towards memory, some of them do, but they're they're active. Whereas this one seems to just be hosting it as in just it's card storage. Um, yeah, and then you have to click to install the program. You can't use it. So unlike the like Jin or Shirazad or um, Leprechaun, any of those Shirazad, Leprechaun actually let you use the programs that are hosted on them. Um, and Progenitor. Yeah, stuff like that is like you ins you install it and host it on it. This one is it's hosted, but it's like you know it's basically it's, face down or something because you can't actually use the program. Yeah. So. so I assume this one's going to get errated to explain better why or how it's supposed to work. Or we're just really bad at Netrunner, and we, you can you know comment in the video about how we're so wrong here. So please yeah, do yeah. and let us know what's happening. Yeah, it's, it's obvious. It's just, just new, read so. the rules. Yeah, seriously, like page fifteen. So, noobs. But I mean, it, it um, it's kind of a, a special delivery or not uh, express order. Mm -hmm. yeah, special you, delivery. Yeah. You get to look and look at your top five cards. Uh, it also lets you reshuffle your stack, mm -hmm. which is useful sometimes if you just you're not getting what you want and you want to change the order. Yeah, that's true because um, you don't have to like yeah. I guess so. This right. lets you dig for programs and change things up. Um, and having having a bunch of your programs out. I, I just, the thing I don't like about this card is that it doesn't say face down. So I wish it was like it's all custom my secretary. Type any programs from the top five and put them face down. Custom my secretary because then the corp doesn't know. Oh yeah, I really need to target that. Or it gives a little like a bluff mechanic there, but I, that to me is like yeah, the, the amount of information they get from you putting those programs out is kind of frustrating because you might you'd rather draw them. Because but because it's only them. programs, it, it has to be face up. Because uh, anytime that there's a verify, you know what card type. Oh it's, yeah, it's that's that's a thing, good point. So. That's a good point. All right. Well, but yeah, I think so we've uh, exhausted this card. <laughs> probably not. But yeah. we, all we, right, we have time. This is people one that bored. we were both kind of interested in, but interested to see what people yeah, say. Yeah, like I, I could see this going in a lot of decks. Not every deck. Mm -hmm. So this um, is called Build Script, and it costs zero credits. It's an event, and it's a neutral, so you don't have to. It's got an influence though, which is interesting. I didn't well, because what it does? I mean, you gain a click and draw two cards. So. This is like butter efficiency, right? This is like magnum opus or, you know, what is it? Like Mr. Lee. Stuff like that that lets you do two things for one is just great in Netrunner. It's a card, so it's an event, so yeah. it only happens once. But, but this is three things. Yeah, it is. So you pay zero credits in a click, and you get a credit and draw two cards. So you're always getting the two, like the three for one, right? Yeah, well, uh, it's sort of a... It's a Deuces Wild, but you don't get to choose things. You just yeah, get these, because Deuces Wild costs two, you get three credits. Yeah. So you get the credit, and then you draw two cards. Like. And, and you get to play an event, too, which can matter sometimes, like with Comet. You know, uh, if Comet you did this, you or, can get like a three for a four for one or five for one, depending on uh, right? Who is it, Ken? Yeah, Ken Tenma, you get money. Yeah. So, I mean, a cheap one influence, the one influence I think hurts it a lot, because it's not, I don't necessarily think it's good enough for a, like, wasting an influence, especially in like most wanted list stuff nowadays. It's interesting. It would be interesting Maybe. to see where it goes because one influence is is not enough to affect things sometimes, but not necessarily break it or just and make it. You would want less. like three of these, which is painful because you're like, ah, this is good because I can spend a click to do but three things, right? That's that's what we're talking about. But I don't know. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how this card goes into decks. A, a deck that you want to dig more than money, uh, I would say that. Yeah, too, because it's like a diesel. It's almost like a mini diesel. Mm -hmm. So the last card we're going to talk about is going to be the new runner, loss. And I'm gonna, he's a G mod. He's got zero link. He's a data hijacker. Which I mean, is he like? Is he like the data train? I don't is know. I assume the data is coming in through the uh, the hoses. Oh, maybe plugged into him. That didn't sound like Ghost in a Shell last night. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he's got 45 cards in his deck and 15 influence. Well, I mean, they're gonna. Hey, we just saw Ghost in a Shell. It was good. You should go see it. But uh, he's a, he's a, again G mod. Says the first time the corp rises a piece of ice, each turn gain two. Uh, his thing, it makes me laugh because it's like the underpants nose from South Park. Uh, from code to profit in three easy steps. So, you know, step one is hack, step two, step three is profit, profit. right? So, uh, and I mean, he, I was saying last night, it's not really a subtle effect, but it is something that is useful and you're saying it can really kind of swing things um, pretty good for the runner because resing is already a detriment. Uh, it's a necessary definitely. Yeah, but. and so the way that the flow of Netrunner typically works, if you think about the very basics, is that the runner's constantly like building up and building, like in losing, Just building up and losing. And so those are predictive, not predictive, but you can kind of understand that. You see something go up and you see something go down. If a runner has no credits, they're going to try to get more credits, right? 
if the corp has money, they res ice, they're in the same spot. So like you, but as the corp, you're not doing anything until the runner does stuff, really. I mean, unless you're doing like a sand sand or something to score. Like you either sco you're either spending right. money scoring or spending money stopping the runner from scoring, right? And when you do that, the runner is also usually losing money because they're running. But in this case, right. the, the, like you end up over the, you just end up a little bit over the corp because they're spending money and you're spending money, but you have two credits now, Yeah. right? So like, I mean, for the same reason that things like, you know, what is his name? Gabriel's good, and anything that gives you money when something happens that the co that's a cause of, that's an effect of the corporation spending money, that is pretty good. Like, and the first time he, the corp rises each turn is pretty good too. I mean, two free credits a turn. I mean, it isn't that bad. I I think you might see him a lot more if it wasn't the first time, but oh yeah, I mean that would oh. be broken though. Possibly. Uh, how much more ice do you res in a typical game though? I guess that's fair, but. Uh, this could be really cool with some stuff we were talking. We were talking about like forced, uh, forced, forced activation, activation yeah. order. Because then you could do it in your turn and their turn. Because yeah. you're like force activation order. Your first click get two credits and force them to res ice or trash it, or either get two credits or they trash nice. And you're like, cool. What? They don't have to do I, this. I'm ahead. Yeah. So uh, as far as c c criminal runners go, he's another one that gives you money for stuff, and usually that's what people like about criminal runners. I think. But yeah. Um, his uh, it's not as. Not as controlled by you, which is something that, that makes him not as good as Gabriel. Well, yeah, but it also um, forces you to go poke around and things. Yeah, maybe it's a really so. good like starter runner because if you give someone a deck like this, you could be like, oh man, you really want to, you know, you like, want to run, you want to run, and that, that you want me to red ice, yeah. or you know, you want to get through one way or another. Yeah. Well, that was station one. Uh, that was our, cool. our pack review. Yeah, put that back up there. Um, if you guys have any comments or anything that, let us know. And, you know, make sure to like and follow and subscribe to all of the things Collector Mania. And we'll be back next time with uh, another review. And theoretically, this one will be it. Also, you know, come come visit us. Oh, yeah. Stalk us. So. We, uh, we play LCGs on Tuesday nights and Saturdays. So come on down. We have monthly tournaments for Netrunner uh, the fourth Saturday of every month. So, you know, make sure that uh, you come see us. It's a pretty good time. See you next time. Take care.